Hello, I'm Boris Lipkin. I'm the Northern California Regional Director with the California High Speed Rail Authority. And today I'm on the campus of San Jose State University, a beautiful location in downtown San Jose, framed by birds and trees and even folks doing Tai Chi over here. But uh, today I'm joined by John Linsinger, who's the project manager for the San Francisco San Jose and San Jose to Merced project sections uh, for the environmental clearance work, and is also an instructor at San Jose State's Mineta Transportation Institute, or MTI. With the board's recent certification of the environmental document for the San Francisco San Jose project section, we've now completed all of the environmental clearance work in Northern California, which is a major milestone for the program and a huge step in bringing high-speed rail to Northern California. John and his team have been critical in helping us develop and ultimately uh, produce uh, these environmental documents and get to this stage in the program. So John, you've had a chance to work on the program for a while. What has been your experience working on the California High Speed Rail Project? It's been very interesting. So our involvement with the, with the High Speed Rail program started with the approval of Prop 1A back in 2008. So we were selected for the San Francisco San Jose section, a big infrastructure project, Caltrain and High Speed Rail, lots of train service, and then there was a change. The change was going to blended service. Uh, since then, we worked through both sections. Uh, we achieved the environmental document uh, adoption and certification back in April for, for the San Jose Merced, uh, which goes from San Jose South through Gilroy, where I live. Uh, lots of improvements there. Uh, and then the Northern California, and then the section for the peninsula uh, that we're on the, that we've had approval on just recently. So very satisfying. It's going to be a great benefit to the citizens of California and the visitors that will be here for generations. Obviously, this has been a pretty long and ex extensive process, and we've had lots of changes and things uh, along the way, and certainly responding to communities and feedback that we've received. What's an anecdote or something that um, folks might not know about working on the project that you'd like to share with everybody? Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> there's, there's so many things. You hear quotes from the public meetings. But I think one, one kind of anecdote is these big projects take a while and you can measure it through your kids. So, so our kids, our daughters were in middle school and elementary school, you know, at the start of the program and now they're all through college, they're out working, they're wondering when they're going to ride the train. So, so these big projects take a while, but, uh, but they're measured in, in the overall benefit that, you'll, that, you know, that you have at the end of the project and once everything is implemented. And maybe taking a, a step back, uh, what are some other rail projects either in the Bay Area or across California that you've had a chance to work on? And what have been some of the lessons from those that you uh, brought over to High Speed Rail? So rail projects, um, I've done a few projects with the Caltrain service. So there was a maintenance facility uh, that was built in the mid 2000s. Uh, a lot of public involvement with that, a lot of community outreach, buying into the solutions that were there, uh, testing, the, you know, the design requirements, the construction requirements that were developed, really gaining trust with the public. Uh, that was one project, uh, the Fairfield Vacaville train station project up at the north end of the bay uh, is through service for Amtrak. Uh, so that was providing a new service, new stop for the citizens there. And then there's BART and other projects uh, that I've been involved in over the course of the years in the Bay Area. So maybe let's talk a little bit about your role specifically as the project manager for the HNTB team that's been working on the program. Uh, what's involved in being the project manager and how have you stepped into that role for working on the project? So, you know, as project manager, you're leading the team. You need to inspire the team, keep tabs on schedule, communication, uh, the integration, you know, within the team, environmental outreach, the design side. I was the engineering manager for a while. Uh, and then once we got through engineering, moved into the project manager role. Uh, so, but you really have to be that conductor of, of using your experts. Uh, so when, it's, it, when, when there's an outreach element to it, I go to our outreach lead and kind of let them step in front and they're leading the team there at that point in time. And when it's environmental, same thing. You really allow your experts, the subject matter experts in these different disciplines to shine and show their professionalism and, and, the, and the dedication that they have to getting the work done. And, you know, I think sometimes these, mega, these huge projects are kind of a mystery to people, that, you know, how they work on the inside. 
Uh, and what do you think are some of the best practices or lessons learned from, you know, these two environmental clearance sections are probably two of the largest environmental clearance efforts that have been undertaken in the, in the Bay Area. Uh, what are some of the key lessons or the things that you really need to know in order to work on a major, major uh, transportation project like this, and especially the environmental clearance stage of the, of the program? So um, that's a very good point. Uh, planning ahead of time. Uh, there's a time for planning and engaging with the stakeholders. And then once, once they understand what your requirements and guidelines are, there's kind of this fixed area between the OCS poles and the track that has to have all those fixed dimensions. Things outside of that can be adopted and, and morphed to use the community input. Uh, and with, with the project teams, with the authority, working with the stakeholders, whether it's the public or city staff, is understanding where, where's the flexibility. Uh, and then that comes through communication. And then when you go out to the public uh, with public meetings, every public meeting is, oh, there's new input. Uh, how can we influence the project? Here's our concerns. You're making some adjustments. The long time frame, particularly in the environmental phase, is there is a point in time when you have to freeze the design to allow environmental impact analysis to be done. Uh, you can still take public input but you're thinking more ahead towards public comments and, and what, what changes could be adjusted at that point. That's, that's probably the big point between the public's perception and being internal to the team is, is that time period to allow analysis to happen on a, on a fixed design instead of continuous improvement, uh, which is, which from the outside could say, Maybe that's more the appropriate way to do it. So, so that's, that's kind of a big lesson learned, you know, as the authority moves on to other potential sections and, and other projects. Because, you know, these large projects are all the same. They have all the same elements. Uh, there's outreach, planning, environmental design, et cetera. And, and John, with the, the process that we've been through, of course, there's challenges that come up along the way. What's a challenge that you experienced and uh, what was the correct course of action that hopefully you took or helped us take uh, along the way to get us to this to the end point here. Yeah, so at the, you know, at the start in 2016, 2017, when the authority restarted the sections up here, uh, we had three alternatives that uh, had been developed over the years. Uh, we got going, we met with the city of Morgan Hill and did a field walk with, with the city staff. And lo and behold, what, was, what were some empty parcels are occupied houses, residential, transit-oriented development. It's like, oh my gosh, we need to put the alignment in a little bit of a different spot here uh, and, and to be responsive to, to these changes over time. So we pivoted, we took one of the area alternatives, went and did a bypass of the downtown area uh, to get around this area. Uh, the other alternative, uh, had fewer impacts, so that was allowed to be stable. So that was a big eye-opener with having to change and kind of pivot in real time, take the community feedback, make an adjustment, keep the schedule moving along with the development because there's still an environmental document that needs to be completed. Sure, yeah, it's always a, things evolve and you have to be aware of what's going on around you and making these kinds of um, projects and decisions. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit about sort of, you know, the, the arc of your career and that, you, you know, you've had lots of different projects you worked on, you have lots of experience to share. What would be some things that you would want to impart to somebody who's just starting out? I know you sometimes uh, teach at San Jose State and, and have a chance to hopefully inspire the next generation of transportation professionals, but what would be kind of some of the key lessons that you would want them to take away from your, your path and your career? Yeah, so in, in my career, I started off in highways at Caltrans. Uh, so I got a strong fundamental background foundation in the process that's needed to go through projects through the design work, uh, did some residential work and some commercial in schools and rail and, and ultimately high speed rail. Uh, and with the fundamental kind of building blocks, there are some projects, particularly this project, that you need your career behind you in order to do it well and, and, and to be able to anticipate. So. When I teach the students um, it, you know, as part of the MTI grad level classes, they're all working professionals, uh, generally with public agencies. 
and they might be BART or LA Metro uh, or, or other groups, these projects are all the same. There are some fundamental elements. Uh, I talked about kind of project management, outreach, design, environmental, uh, but build on your career experience and think back to, oh, I solved this problem, might have been 10 years ago. Uh, so there's always a little nugget that you have in your experience backpack that, that allows you to help get through another obstacle that may come up. And then when you have these, then you're bringing all that experience onto the next project. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one important element is, is to remember where you've been, pick out the good parts, pick out the parts you made enhancements to, and then test those again, make a modification on the next project. Well, John, thank you for this discussion and thank you to you and your team for all the great work in getting us here. Again, this is certainly a team effort and uh, we, we certainly have appreciated the, the great work uh, that you've done and uh, having a chance to highlight it here has, uh, is a great privilege and a great value. So thank you for, for your time and your effort uh, in getting us to this point. Thank you very much. It's been a, a pleasure and you know, on behalf of our whole team, hundreds and hundreds of people, with different specialties. Uh, it's it's a real point of pride and satisfaction, professionalism to get to this point and to complete the environmental sections uh, for these two sections in Northern California. We really appreciate the opportunity and look forward to, to the next phases of the project. If you want to learn more, you can visit the High Speed Rail Authority website at www.hsr.ca.gov. Thanks and have a great day.